With the release of ChatGPT and other AI tools, now you can create applications much faster than ever if you are familiar with how these tools operate. Now, most people will not use them effectively, but if you do it right, which is something that I will show you in this video, you will be able to create an application that will take you a year to develop into a week or a month by using AI properly. Like I said, most people don't know how to use it and they do it wrong. But if you use it right, if you're a developer, if you know how to understand it, you will go much faster than anyone else and create million dollar companies with this tool. So let's get started. In this video, I'm going to cover these three topics, how to work efficiently, how to use ChatGPT and use search properly. These are topics to increase your development speed so you can create applications much faster, save yourself time and pain. Now, first, how to work efficiently by keeping code visible at all times. Now, this is just a sample application that I created. Most people, when they develop, they, okay, they see, okay, we need to change this function. We need to include this code. And the truth is in large projects, you will find out that there are many folders, many applications that have thousands of lines of code. And it's very difficult to keep track of your code. It becomes very convoluted. So what I found out is that with tool editors like Cursor or Visual Studio Code, you have this split editor option. Most people don't use it, but it's one of the most effective things you can do. But yeah, this is one of the most effective tools you can use because first, let's say I am editing this function and I don't know what bot is. If I go up here, I may lose track and then I'll have to find it again. And it quickly going back and forth becomes a very distracting process. You lose your train of thought, you get lost in the code, especially in large applications. So what I found is just, you click on this, you select the part that you want to keep track. Okay, I'm here. Then you split your screen. And while this is open, you go up and find whatever you're looking for. For instance here, now I know that bot is this. I can make some changes here. I can say, okay, this bot needs to be, you know, divided by 10 or something like that. And then I close it and I'm back here after all those changes are done. Compare that to going here. Okay, what is bot? I'm going here, 10, okay, save. Now, where is it bot again? Okay, here, it's so much more time consuming. And not only that, you can get lost in the process so much easier. Trust me, I've been doing this for years. So just splitting the screen is something that most people don't know and they don't do it. In fact, I sometimes split the screen multiple times. I put the places, I put them like so, so that you can click on them and they expand automatically like that. It's a very, very effective tool that most people don't use. And this will save you time. This will keep you focused and flowing. Now, when it comes to ChatGPT, effectively for coding and save 90% of your development time, what you need to do first is to use a tool like this one, Cursor which will integrate ChatGPT in your browser, in your code editor, I mean. Here I can change it to GPT-4, GPT-4.0, or GPT-3.5. I use this 3.5, 3.5 whenever I need some simple tasks, like, you know, solve, implement a function, like sometimes I say, how do I filter items when I have an array like that, and so on. But most people, what they do is they are very vague in their descriptions. What I found out is that AI, it's very good once you provide specific, clear and detailed instructions. For instance, you can even ask AI to write you detailed prompts for something that you want to create. For instance, let's say I want to create a marketplace application for, you know, a type of e-commerce website. Let's say an e-commerce website where people can post their own products and sell them. Okay, so what a random person would do is they will start with how write the code to create an e-commerce application where users can upload their own products. Now, someone that doesn't know code will do something like that. And of course they will get the code, but this code is too simple, too vague. So the difficulty comes from having a clear idea of what you want to create. For instance, let's say I want to have something like Amazon where you have multiple sections 
and each person can upload their files, their, their products on each section and the code must be written like, so let me write you a better example of how this would be done. Write the code for an e-commerce application using where users upload their own products. Make sure to use Express.js, write it in JavaScript, use Stripe as the payment system so that people can include a payment link to their products. Then make sure to include categories where users can define their type of product allow users to search by name things like that you see i went from a very broad type of application to a very specific type of an idea now i didn't specify the database i didn't say how to use stripe because stripe you can use subscriptions you can use one one time payment links and things like that but here we got some code that is much more descriptive like initially we got this which is a very simple application that says upload products and here we say a product you can include a payment link a category a search function see it's starting to build up from the beginning idea to something more advanced now when you see this code you you will probably understand it and you will say okay this is missing a few things first the function to get products so i'll go ahead and continue the conversation and say And this is how you do it. You are building on top of these ideas. But what I found out is when I develop code that is for crypto trading applications, MEV bots, they are very complex and the problems that I encounter are very unique. So the more descriptive I am and the clearer of an idea I have in my head, the much more effective code I get. Usually for those cases I use GPT-4, it's more, it's more expensive, but it's so much better when it comes to creating quality code. And whenever you get stuck on a problem, you use AI to, to help you fix it. You see all this code, it was developed in seconds. I could have done by myself, but then I have to remember how Express is defined, how to use the middleware for JSON files, the different endpoints. This is done for me, and this probably saved me 10, 20 minutes. So this is how you do it. This is how you use ChatGPT properly, because most people don't are either not clear enough or they don't continue building on top of their original idea to make it specific. So that's why I recommend to have a very clear idea, write down everything you want your application to have upfront and then set the prompt with that. Now, a final tip is to use the search properly. Most people don't use search properly. And I mean, I know what you're thinking, like how do you use search? Properly. Most people, they search code, but they, they don't use it efficiently. What, I'm, what I mean by that is, let's say you're working on this application on the Uniswap swap exchange, and you need to change in this section, you need to change market to, let's say, something like now or something like that. How do you go about that? Do you go through the many different files that are here and then try to locate where that is located? Or, well, that's a very... That's, that works, but it's very in inefficient. So what you should do is search the code, the line, or the selector. For instance, here we see class limit price button. So I will simply copy that class, go to the search here, global search, paste it, and that will find me the exact file and the line where that is implemented. From there, I can go and make those changes much faster than just going manually through each file. Most people, they don't do that. They simply go through the different files. They try to locate it. Okay, where is the file that affects the swap in the limit section? It's much more inefficient. So I recommend to use search for finding items that you want to edit. You usually make changes to the front end like that. You select the item, you find the class or something that identifies the thing and you make those changes. It's simple, but it's so overlooked. Most people don't do that. And even if they do, they sometimes forget and they go through the files. 
wasting time. So those are the three tips I wanted to leave out you with. Hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe, leave a like if you found this useful and see you soon.